Oh, okay. Hey, kia ora, Helen Brown taking me live from Sun City in Arizona. Hope you've all had a super fantastic, sparkling, fun Friday. Yay! Um, yes, I got so busy this morning, I didn't even have time for a live. It was a busy morning. We're talking about getting up at five o'clock, so back to normal wake up time getting my morning devotions done, started a 21-day meditation challenge. Um, from there, um, showered a dress, took Zephy for her. In fact, no, we didn't even have time to take Zephy for the walk because I got caught up in um, one of those things when you turn around and say, I'm just going to go and do this. And you look at the clock and it's like 30 minutes later and your one thing you were going to go and do would take all of two minutes. And then I went on and I'm working with um, with a new software um, platform, a new CRM platform called um, Get Expand, Go Expand Now. And um, it takes you, and so I went in there, I thought, oh, I need to go do this one thing. Yeah, and that one thing led to, oh, well, while I'm here, I'll just do this. Oh, and then I have to do this, and then I have to do that. And I looked up at the clock, and it was like 7 o'clock, and I'm like, oh, shoot. So I raced through the shower, got dressed. It was 7.30 by the time um, I was ready to go. <laughs> Zeph was not impressed. But I got ready to go for a walk so that um, as soon as we got off the wake-up call, we went for our walk. And then we got back from the wake-up call, um, back from our walk, um, with like 10 minutes to spare <laughs> before I had to get on a call at nine o'clock. Um, that call was uh, um, just under an hour and then I had another call at 10 o'clock. Oh, so I thought. So I'm sitting here and I'm waiting for the person to get on the call and I'm working on that project I'd started working on that morning on the Go Expand Now thing. So I'm working on more of that because um, I need to get it up and running and I've got most of what I need to get done done. Um, and um, so I texted the person. I said, hey, you, you know, it's 10.20. Where are you? Do you want to reschedule? And he and they called me and said, oh, I had done 11 o'clock, not 10 o'clock. And I'm like, oh, had a miscommunication. Well, fortunately, I have 11 o'clock available. That's my lunch hour, but it was available. And so then I suddenly thought, oh, I haven't had breakfast. So <laughs> I got off that call, went and grabbed breakfast, sat down, ate my breakfast, and then back into the projects again. So when the person came on at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock, we were then able to get everything done that needed to get done. Um, able to, I was able to learn a lot more about the system and everything else. And uh, and I went from that, I had like five minutes, filled up my water bottle, washed my breakfast dishes, <laughs> quickly ran to the bathroom, and then sat down and got online to get onto the chat. And the chat today was, um, was better than yesterday. We had a lot of snarky people yesterday. Um, yeah, but it was definitely better than yesterday. Um, it was all, it was just a sort of a, it was a steady, a steady, that's the word I was looking for. It was a steady day. So there wasn't a lot of time to muck around or anything like that. And then I got off and um, finished work and I didn't even know the time had gone by because uh, the guy that comes in at five o'clock puts the message in the thing and says, hey, I'm here, hello, da, da, da. and I'm like, at four, yeah, he comes on at five o'clock mountain time. And I look at the clock and it's like just before four and I'm like, oh, I get off in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we did our trade off and everything else and um, and that was it and then I got again caught up in this stuff that I'm doing because I want to get this done I want to get it done like I said I got most of it done I still have a little bit left to do um, and then I was getting ready and I was like man I'm hungry so I just grabbed a bowl of cereal <laughs> I could. I just wanted something quick, and I thought I'm just going to grab a bowl of cereal, and and I got this keto friendly cereal. It's really yummy. I mean, you could just sit there and just eat the cereal by itself with no milk, no nothing, and just eat it. They're like little mini crackers, and uh, it's really yummy. And these, this one is chocolate mint flavor. I had the chocolate flavor the other day, and now I've got the chocolate mint flavor. Really yummy, um, and it's a keto um, cereal. And uh, so I thought, well, that can't hurt me too much. And so I had some of that, um, and then um, and then I was like, okay, time to get up and go for a WALK. And she just looked at me. She just popped, popped, popped her head up over the chair and like, 
are you talking about? Mississippi. Because where her bed is, is behind the passenger seat. And I got the passenger seat twisted around, so the seat side's facing us, so we've got extra seating. And as soon as I mentioned, it's time to go now for a WA. Okay, who head went? What are you doing? What are we doing? Where are we going? Oh, you're just saying there. Okay. Um, <laughs> she is so funny. Um, uh, oh, I'll go. We'll go for our WA. Okay. And I thought, like, uh, feeling really tired, exhausted. So I'm going to. So I thought, I oh, know. I'll do my live first. Then I. And then I'm like, did I do my morning live? And so I had to go back and have a look. And I'm like, oh, crap. And then I looked at what my day was like. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. We didn't allow any time in the morning for the live um, because I got sidetracked when I went to do my one thing that I had to go do. Um, yeah. yeah. And I was talking, I was um, talking with a friend, um, the friend I work with, her and I were chatting a little bit while waiting for replies and stuff to come in. And uh, so I told her to go check out my Facebook page because she hadn't seen um, the TikTok that's on there of what it's like for... Um, you know, getting, was it something like about grabbing lunch with ADHD or something? I don't know. But she she watches the video, she comes back and goes, oh my God, that is so you. <laughs> I says, you don't want to see me when I do genealogy research. She's like, she's like, but that's sort of like a very processed. I says, yeah. I said, but I find a link and I don't want to leave the page I'm on. So I end up with like 20 plus tabs open because I don't want to use the link because I want to go back and read the information that's there, especially if it pertains to the person I'm researching. And she goes, oh, I can totally see you doing that. <laughs> so yes, I even get sidetracked while doing genealogy research. You just go down these different rabbit holes and into different rabbit warrens and through the little network and everything else. That's what the internet's like. You go down the hole. You know, Alice in Wonderland, go down the hole. And all the fun stuff starts to happen. So um, Yes, so uh, she watched that little video that's on my Facebook page, and uh, she goes, that is so you. <laughs> so I have to fiddle. I'm now fiddling with an emery board. Oh, my gosh. Let's pick up whatever's close at hand. And uh, so, yeah, so it's been a very fun day. <laughs> a very busy day. I am mentally and physically exhausted right now. Um, still got my spring in my step. Still got the spark going. Um I'm actually ready just to like go crawl into bed, but Zephy needs to go for a walk, so we're going to go do that. Um, and uh, I've already had cereal for. If I feel like anything else later on, I'm just going to make a protein, and I've got a plant-based protein powder that I use, so um, I'll just go make a protein shake and have that later on if I feel like anything else. But I think it'll be an early night tonight, and even though it's the weekend tomorrow, I still get up at five o'clock in the morning. Occasionally, I have a sleep in. But I have, I'm already working out what I'm going to get on Sunday because Sunday is, Sunday is the, um, because Wednesday was Brad's birthday. So the week has been very roller coaster ish type of thing. Um, and because I couldn't, because I didn't take the day off to celebrate his day, um, I figured I'm just going to take a weekend day and I have an, I have a catch up call with a friend tomorrow already booked. And, um, so I'm like, okay, Sunday is going to be sit down, put the feet up, and remember Brad by what – well, I can't do the Star Wars trilogies, which I would love to do because I have them all on DVD, but they're in storage. Um, so I'll probably be watching either Lord of the Rings or Hobbit trilogies because those were two of his favorites. Um, but I know that if I watch the Lord of the Rings one, that's like 12 hours because each video, each movie is like about four hours long with 25 to 30 minute credits at the end. And yes, I sit and watch the credits. And the cool part about watching the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit credits is they were both filmed in New Zealand. So I'm going to say, oh, who do I know that's on that list? So I watch all the credits because, you know, it's a, if when you sit and watch the credits, even though they can't see it, it is a way of paying tribute to all the people who put in all that effort to bring you movies. And sometimes there's little hidden things within the within the credits. Like I've seen some movies that they'll do, they'll put bloopers in every now and again through the credits. And Brad was one of those people, I trained him. He was one of those people that would stand, the credits start rolling, he'd stand up and I just said, the first time we went to the movies, he stood up and started walking away. Then he realized I wasn't behind him. 
and he just looks back and I'm still sitting there in my seat all comfy and I haven't moved a muscle right and uh, he goes what are you doing I said I'm waiting for the credits to roll he goes but the movie's finished I said no it's not he goes what do you mean I said the credits are part of the movie I said you know it's a way of saying thank you to all of those who put the effort in to um to making the movie that we just watched and I said and sometimes there's gems in the in the credits he goes like what I said well I have a I have a distant cousin who is actually a producer in Hollywood. So I want to see if they were part of this movie, part of this movie. Um, and I said, there's other names that I know too, that I want to see if they worked on this movie. And I said, and sometimes they put gems in there. And he goes, what do you mean gems? I says, well, you'll just have to sit through the credits and find out. <laughs> so he sat down with me and I can't remember what movie it was, but, or, but as soon as he sat down, the credits disappeared. They paid a couple of bloopers, went back to rolling the credits again. <laughs> and he said like, hang on and I'm like this is why you sit and watch the credits and so after that we sat and watched the credits and uh, yeah sometimes we'll go with the boys and they were like come on the movie's over and I said, Shh. we're watching the credits <laughs> I'll sit down and watch the credits and uh, yeah I was yeah training people to watch credits is fun but you never know what's going to be in the credits there could be outtakes there could be bloopers there could be one ah oh, one movie i wish i could remember the movie um it's scrolling along the credits and all of a sudden up comes a recipe for some cake or ice cream or something some recipe scrolls across the scrolls up the screen and they had recipes and cooking or baking hints and tips throughout the credits as it's rolling and uh, yeah brad learned to like the credits after that one <laughs> after that first time um but yeah so i'm going to be watching either so credits on a Lord of the Rings or a Hobbit movie is anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes depending which movie you want so it is a long time to sit there and watch names but you never know who you know there could be names that are familiar so you know you never know and especially if you know where it was filmed if it was filmed somewhere near where you grew up and something stop and have a look because sometimes they use local people so they could be in the credits as well you wouldn't know that unless you watch them um so yeah so I think three movies four hours and I think the Hobbit is like 30 minutes less than each of those so um, we're gonna start early get up go for a walk come back have breakfast while we watch the first one um, lunch will be for the second one but I'm looking at um, oh, what can I do food wise and Brad's favorite cake was pineapple upside down cake and I thought oh I didn't have any restaurants that do pineapple upside down cake and then I suddenly thought oh wait a minute the cheesecake factory has a pineapple upside down cake cheesecake and they um baked a cheesecake baked a pineapple upside down cake into the cheesecake so you look at the the sideways picture of it and it's got the the cheesecake crust then a layer of pineapple upside down cake then a layer of cheesecake and then a layer of pineapple upside down cake complete with all of the pineapple and cherries on top and so it's like hmm maybe we'll do that and I had to think now what did he like when we went to the cheesecake and he likes spicy foods yeah this one don't do spice um so I'm having a look at hmm what could we get from there that I would eat that he would have enjoyed so I've been looking through their menu to see what I can order I'm still deciding whether I'm going to have it delivered or go down and pick it but I'll probably have it delivered because we're going to be watching movies all day um may fall asleep during them that's okay not a problem this one does not mind having naps in the middle of movies that she's seen multiple times um if i do it on the first time at a movie i'm sort of like really upset but if i do it on replay when i'm watching it like you know, the 10th 20th 30th time through a movie um and i fall asleep it's okay because i wake up and go oh yeah right. oh they missed that part wind it back to my favorite bit and watch it again <laughs> it's what you can do when you've got dvds and on-demand movies sorts of cool things so that's going to be my fun day on Sunday as I get to do that it's part of my serenity Sunday I'm just going to do a whole day what I'm doing tomorrow is I have a conversation with a friend coming up tomorrow um and then I you know I keep saying it and I never get it done I gotta sort out this RV I have to I've got stuff piled everywhere right now some of the piles are sorted and some of them are not some of them are to be sorted so it's now okay make the decision and I know that there's stuff that I've taken out from the underneath the locker, the underneath lockers, like my basement lockers. So it's sort of like, okay, I have to get that stuff. I've got to go pull the containers out that they came from. 
pack them back into the containers, put the containers back into the um, into the lockers, and that will clear up probably about 50% of what I've got in here. Yeah, I mean, that's how bad I am. I take stuff out and don't put it back. And at some point, I'm going to go through the overhead lockers here. But I do have to go through my pantry lockers because I've got stuff that I need to put up there. And there's probably some stuff sitting right at the back where I can't see it and can't reach it that might be expired. So I have to go in and check. So, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. But I do need to line um, the one above my microwave, which makes a great storage unit, by the way. Um, the one above the cabinet above the microwave and the cabinet above the fridge, I have to line um, with the Reflectix, which is that shiny silver paper stuff. Um, because it gets too hot in there and I need to barrier that somehow and I need to do it on my front lockers where my electronics are and these lock these overheads up here the ones in the bedroom I'm not worried about because it's just linens so <laughs> I'm like, yeah so the ones that are on the west side of the slide out and stuff that's all linens it's sheets pillowcases towels hand towels um, tea towels yeah it's all linen stuff up there so um, and I have linens to put away up there as well so yeah we, we might be doing a bit of a clean up and I gotta clean the bathroom and kitchen's pretty much clean because I clean as I go in that bathroom I go and do that every week Ugh, I hate cleaning bathrooms anyway it's all about fun I'm waffling I need to take the DOG for a WALK She's learning to spell. Her head just, what are we doing? She is too damn smart for her own damn good. That's what she is. But anyway, um, what fun things do you have for this weekend? Oh, and we have a new Tell Your Story question of the month. What jobs have you had over the years? Like what was what was the very first job you had as a, you know, did you have a job as a kid? What was your first job as a kid? You know, I've babysat, paper rounds, gas, jock, um, gas pump jockey, worked as a waitress and server in tea rooms um is that all i did during my teenage years maybe sitting newspaper route newspaper route was actually for a couple of weeks where i took took a, a friend was going on vacation so I needed someone to cover a route so i did her route for a couple of weeks it was three weeks because i had a week training and then two weeks by myself until she came back and that was the early starts when i when i was a night person not a morning person getting up at five o'clock in the morning in the cold getting dressed psych taking on my bike cycling down the big hill down to the bay to the place where the, we picked up the newspapers from which was right next to a bakery <laughs> and then we got on our bikes and we had to and i had to cycle back up this big hill um and along a bit further and then i got to start my paper route so yeah that was it was got some good cycling in <laughs> got some good cycling in during those three weeks that I was doing that paper out it was and with a full load of newspapers on the back that was tough stuff to do that was that was tough to do and I had an apple box on the back with the newspapers sitting in it and you pull up to the letterbox the mailbox scroll it up stick it in the newspaper tube and go on to the next one and I missed my very first time by myself I missed a house and this woman opens the window and goes excuse me where's our paper I'm, like, oh, I'm sorry but anyway, um, so yeah, that was one of my babysitting from the age of like 10. I think I was, I think I was 10 when I had my first babysitting job. Newspaper route, I did that when I was 12. Yeah, I was, was that intermediate at that point? Yes, yeah, so I was 12 when I did that one. Um, then I got to work in tea rooms for a while, and then I got to be a gas pump jockey. Um, it was actually quite funny. We drove down to this gas station, and um, dad filled up the car and the owner of the gas station came we call them petrol stations in New Zealand he came out and he's busy talking to dad he looks at me and he goes and he and he looks across at me and he goes do you want a job and I thought he was talking to my dad because they were busy talking I wasn't paying attention I'm like what <laughs> excuse me and he turns and he says do you want a job and I go doing what and he says minding the store and pumping gas I'm like okay like because this is a real thing and dad looks at me and says it's okay and I'm like okay then yeah sure <laughs> so, I was 16 at the time I had my driver's license which came in very handy because I had to drive the boss's car which was a Subaru Outback 
um, follow him as he went to deliver a car that had been in the mechanic store that they had there, had been in their mechanic shop. Um, and then, of course, I went to get out to hop in the passenger. He says, no, just stay there. And that was when I first drove a Subaru. I absolutely loved it. It helped to that at the time we had a, a Subaru assembly plant in the town that I lived in. Um, loved the cars. And it wasn't until 20-something years later I actually got Animal, which is my Subaru Forester that I had for 15 years, 14 years, 15 years. I got her in August of 2004. And she was a 2005 model and i sold them in january of 2020 so i had her 15 years and she had just over a hundred thousand miles on the clock <laughs> when we moved from coast to coast we actually shipped animal out so um yeah that was a good car and it and it's still going and the guy the broker who um who purchased it off me and then eventually sold it to, to this other lady she actually, he actually sent me a text one day and he goes, what was the name of your Subaru? And I turned around and wrote back Animal. He goes, oh, that's right. I go, why? And he says, the woman here wanted to know if the previous owner had named her vehicle. <laughs> so the Brits so or the new owner wanted to know if I had named my vehicle. And I said, yeah, Animal, after the Muppet. And uh, so he told her that and she cracked up laughing, but she still calls it Animal. She didn't rename it. It's still known as Animal. So um, Animal's doing very well and got a good loving home and is enjoying life on the road, doing all the driving and everything else. But anyway, I'm out of here. Go have a super fantastic, sparkling, fun weekend. Let us know in the comments what fun stuff you're getting up to. Um, you may inspire somebody else. You may get new ideas from somebody else. You never know. But have a super fantastic, sparkling evening, and we'll catch you back here bright and early tomorrow morning for Shake It Up Saturday. Take it up.